We are coming up on the Northern Wisconsin Muskie opener. Are you ready for it? What's going on everybody? My name is Brian. You are watching Angling Anarchy. And on today's video, well, today I actually was hoping to have some actual musky fishing for you. And I attempted to do that, but we just, we saw a couple. Musky right there. There he goes. Not interested. Just cruising the shallows. Oh, there's another big, no, well, not a big musky. Bait just went over him. Willing to hit a jig, bud? Put it right on your nose. <laughs> the answer is no. Well, there's another musky, and I don't think we're going to get him to hit. I suppose I could could give it a try, but the way everything else has been acting, I don't think our chances are very good. nothing to do with it wants nothing to do with it man just can't get him to hit it i hate spring musky fishing <laughs> so frustrating they were up in the shallows just hanging out, not really willing to bite anything. But I did kind of muff a hit later in the day, which was kind of disappointing. <gasps> I just lost a musky, dude. Big one? Uh, big enough that I'm not happy about it. The bait stopped and I thought it was in a weed and I pulled it and I just, all I see is the head flare and the, the bait come out. So that was my attempt at uh, trying to catch a muskie. I uh, wasn't very successful, but that's how it goes. So in lieu of having a actual fishing video, we're going to talk about what you're going to need to do to prepare for the northern Wisconsin muskie opener and more specifically the opener on the Fox River and the tributaries up in Green Bay, which is where I will find myself for the opener Saturday, May 23rd, I believe it is. As most of you know, the Fox River is a hot spot for people to go to for the Northern Wisconsin Muskie opener. It is probably one of the best places to catch a 50 inch fish in Wisconsin, and it is just an amazing place to fish. Now, the problem is the popularity of that spot makes for a crowded opener so if you're going there expecting to not see any other boats good luck there's going to be hundreds of boats out there so I encourage everyone to be patient with your fellow anglers give everybody space everybody that's up there knows it's gonna be crowded so you know pass by say hi say how you doing uh, pretty much everybody is pretty cordial they know it's gonna be tight quarters so you know if you've never been up there before be ready for that. It is, it's is—it's uh, combat fishing at its finest. But I, what I wanted to go over are some of the lures that are popular to use if you've never been up there um, to give you an idea of some of the things to, that you can use up there lure-wise and then we're going to go over some of the important things you need to have in the boat to get these giant fish back in the water in good shape so they can finish doing their thing and get back out into the bay and get even bigger than they already are. Starting off with lures. Probably the single most used thing for the opener on the Fox River is a bucktail. Such as this. This is a little Esox Assault single eight in black smoke. Uh, there's a bunch of different colors, purple and gold, killer corn, um, and not just 
these baits. I mean, I, I obviously like the Esox Assault baits, but any single or double blade bucktail, single seems to work really good though, will work for these fish. The second weekend last year, my buddy Matt got his biggest fish by a long shot. I think he broke his personal best by a half foot by throwing an Esox Assault double eight. I'll leave a link to the video of that fish up here somewhere. You can click on that and check out that video. It's a cool one from last year, but he got his on a double eight. Another cool bait made by a buddy of mine that you can use, and I know you probably have all seen these, the Lee Lures Boilermakers. This is a mini Boilermaker. It's got a single eight blade. It is a bucktail that stays really high because of this little floating body back here. In fact, last year on sort of a prototype Boilermaker, uh, I got a giant 52 inch green bay fish it's my personal best and again i'll leave a little card up top here that you can click on and see footage of that fish but the mini boiler maker or even uh, lee makes a nine and a ten uh, slightly larger body to it but any of those would be good baits to throw on the fox river for the northern wisconsin opener on to hard baits little gliders you know this is a cast tackle shum shum Mini tap dancer, the tap dancers, the shum quickie would be a good one. Uh, Lee Lures has a pelagic glide. Any small glide bait is definitely a bait to throw. Um, so yeah, glide baits are another good bait to use up there when you're going after these super shallow fish. Another hard bait to consider would be a dive and rise. This is the 8 inch cast tackle Navin. I'm going to be tossing this a little bit. Little Suix, uh, Lee Lures Leviathan, any of those baits, little dive and rises. Uh, I don't think a ton of people throw them. I'm sure some do, but uh, with the amount of people that are throwing bucktails, uh, I mean, if, if you've got a couple guys on the boat, definitely somebody needs to be throwing a bucktail. But to switch it up, somebody should be throwing either a glide or a dive and rise just to see if, if they can get a fish that uh, might not be interested in a bucktail to hit a bait like this. So this is another one that you should be sure to have in the boat. These muskies are hanging really shallow. They're coming up to spawn. So they could be up on sand flats and actually they could be right tight to shore. I mean, up in trees and that sort of thing. So I'm definitely going to have a couple of these swim jigs that I've made. Um, I would just take three eighths ounce or half ounce swim jig heads with the weed guard and uh, take the silicone skirt off, uh, make my own kind of uh, Kind of a musky swim jig here with the mylar skirt and then a killer tail on the back something to try i've never really done it but uh you know maybe if those fish aren't looking for the thump of a blade maybe something a little less conspicuous like this swim jig could get one to hit it's worth a shot going back to blades for just a second spinner baits are a good option and this is a new one from our buddy robbie jarnico from today's angler bit tackle it's a boilermaker spinnerbait this thing runs ridiculously high in the water you can slow roll this thing so um, I kind of pepped it up a little bit with a killer tail on the back end um, so yeah bit tackle this is going to be part of the arsenal for that Wisconsin northern Wisconsin opener on the Fox River last but not least don't overlook rubber specifically with this little guy this is a micro medusa um, this is just like the perfect size for spring fishing um, one cool thing you can do there are these little arms you can get and watch i'm going to put this on wrong seriously every time there that's better so you can turn your little micro medusa into a spinnerbait with these little arms. I'll put a link in the description where you can find these spinnerbait arms uh, to add to your plastic baits. But you know, I like it on a micro medusa. You could use a mini. I've seen guys throw them on mids, regulars. I even know some guys that will throw them on some of the swim baits like a Poseidon. So something to consider, uh, you know, most of the baits we're gonna be throwing are smaller, but it doesn't mean they won't hit a bigger bait. So again, Bucktails are king for this type of fishing because it's shallow. Um, you're just trying to get the fish's attention, but try something different. If you've been throwing a bucktail all day, throw something different on and give it a shot. 
you might be surprised at what you catch. Moving on to release tools. Now there's all sorts of videos out there that, that talk about proper handling of muskies and release tools, that sort of thing. I just want to give everybody a quick reminder, uh, even the seasoned veterans out there, you know, if this is maybe one of the first times you're getting out, just take a look in the boat, make sure you've got all the essential things that you'll need to release a muskie safely once you get it in the net. And that's the first thing. Get a net that will accommodate a large muskie. We're talking muskies that could be 52, 54 inch class fish. So the little, you know, hoop net that is in your grandpa's garage isn't going to cut it. You're going to need a big Frable, Beckman, whatever. Get something that you can get that fish in, let it chill out, gives you enough space to get in there, unhook it. It's just, it's safer for everybody that way. So now once you've got that fish in the net, a couple of the tools that are critical to have are as follows. I recommend having a couple pairs of pliers, especially these long ones, just in case that fish really does inhale the bait. I like having two of them, so if you've got a buddy, you can sort of work in tandem to get in there, maybe get leverage on the bait to pop it out. Um, but yeah, a couple of these, have to have them. A mouth spreader doesn't hurt. I don't like to use them. I can usually get you know a, a fish the size we're hoping to deal with, you can usually get a little bit of leverage on the mouth. You don't want to really put too much, obviously, but you can usually get in there. But if you can't, something like this, a longer mouth spreader could come in handy and could save the day. So make sure you've got one in the boat. Always want to have a way to cut hooks, just in case the hooks get into the gills, get way back into the mouth. Sometimes it's just easier to cut those hooks, try to remove the pieces and get that bait out of the fish's mouth. So this is a pair of Nipex. These are probably the, the go-to for most people. I'm sure there's other brands that you can use that are able to cut really heavy hooks. I'm talking eight-out hooks. Make sure it's able to cut through that quickly, easily, so that when you're dealing with the fish, you're not having to struggle with it. You want it to cut nice and clean and fast. All right, guys and gals, those are my recommendations for baits to try when you're fishing the northern Wisconsin opener, specifically on the Fox River and the tributaries of Green Bay. It's going to be a busy one out there, I have a feeling, especially if the weather's nice. The weather leading up to this has been cool, so I, I think it should be a good year. I think there'll be a lot of fish up in the river to target, so good luck to every one of you. I uh, hope you can get a real nice big one. And please, please, please make sure you have that great big net to accommodate a large fish and all the proper release tools so that everything can go smooth for you when you do land that fish of a lifetime. If you're watching this video the day it drops, it is one week away, uh, so we are coming up on this very, very quickly, and I'm getting really excited about it. The other thing I'm excited about is the channel is coming up on 3,000 subscribers, and I just wanted to say thank you to all of you that watch. I really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I upload a video every Saturday at 8.30 Central Standard Time, mostly without fail. There might be one or two weekends in uh, the course of a year that I miss, but for the most part, it is every Saturday at 8.30. So. Uh, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell and you can uh, get that notification every time a video is uploaded. Thanks again everybody for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. We'll see you on the next video.